we've all heard the sayings, you know, how do you, you know, journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step or how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, all, there are all these sayings and, and it, you know, it goes back to the Bible and earlier, yeah. right? I mean, this is not new. These are not new sayings, but they're showing up in different forms. What's lost in those short descriptions, however, is that every step is not equivalent. If it were just that a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step, everyone would pursue their goals. Everyone would push back against adversity. A story of, it's not about just taking a single step and one step at a time. Is it because there's adversities every 10 steps you go and so it's harder and harder? So it's it, not just well, it's just very non-linear. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's some days go, you know, I know this from my scientific career. It's, you know, some days it's easy, some days it's hard. It's all over the place, mm -hmm. right? So I think the thing to remember is that dopamine is this incredibly powerful molecule that allows us to buffer the effort process. It allows us to be in effort longer and it allows us to actually eventually enjoy the process of effort. And not think about the reward, but just say, oh, I'm enjoying the process. Right. Well, you just described the first step. The first step in learning to attach dopamine to the effort process, which is the key operation in order to succeed, is to be very careful about how much you focus on the end goal. Keeping the goal in mind is important for like a proper orientation. You have to know the ultimate destination. But if at any point we were to evaluate our progress relative to that end goal, or if we don't know what the end goal is, there's a huge gap there right. and it can feel overwhelming. And depressing and I'm not good enough. That's right. I should just give up. What am I doing this for? That's right. So I think the key thing is to attach that sense of reward to the effort process. It's saying, look, I am oriented in the right direction and rewarding the things you're not doing. I'm not back on my heels. I'm not just staying, you know, I'm bad in the morning. I'm not, yeah. A good example of this came to me recently. I have a good friend, he did nine years in the SEAL teams. His name is Pat Dossett. And, and we were talking about, you know, the, the Admiral McRaven thing, you know, get up and make your bed. And, you know, and they, they really do that. And, and I think the way it was described was, um, you know, so at the end of the day, even if everything doesn't go well, your bed is still made. Mm -hmm. For me, that's not that big of a reward, frankly. Right. I, but I, and so I said that and I- <laughs> I well, love it though. I make my bed. I mean, oh, I definitely made my bed in the morning, but I mean, it, going back and seeing that at the end of a hard day, mm -hmm. it, it's not enough. It, I felt like there was something else there. Part of it is about not just making your bed, but it's the things you're not doing by making your bed. You're not lying in bed and ruminating. Mm. You're not back on your heels. You're not on your phone. That's right. Yeah. When, so when you look at, and you have spent a lot of time with people in mm. high performing communities, mainly through some consulting work, but what you find is that, you know, we can all be either be back on our heels, flat footed or forward center of mass. Forward, yeah. And when you look at people who are in these high performance communities, they try and keep their center of mass forward. Almost through what seem like trivial things like making your bed or making the cup of coffee, but it's not just about what you're doing. Like, yeah. It's all the things you're not doing that can put you down the path of ruminating or put you down the path of um, unhealthy behavior. Let's say somebody really wants to take on a fitness routine. They hate running or they want to lose weight in a, in a healthy way, this kind of thing. So we've all heard the example, well, you put your shoes by the door on day one, day two, you put them on, day three, you go out the door, day four, you walk around the block and then, you know, and then eventually like they're running marathons. Okay, <laughs> great, but to sustain that behavior or even to make the, the behavior pleasurable and to give you energy, the key is to subjectively reward those steps. So it's not gonna mm. be, let's say I go out and I run a mile and my goal is to run 10 miles in a few weeks. The key is as you're in the strain of that mile, the hard part, you wanna tell yourself, this is the good part. This is the part that gives me energy. And I'll be very surprised if people don't actually feel like they could continue further. So it's a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single, is made up of you know single steps, but the key is to reward the harder steps, not the easier ones and not the ones where you get the thing that you want. Find the wall and push a little bit further through that wall and reward that process. You look at people in special operations, you look at the um, process, like the whole um, evaluation process of who gets in and who doesn't. It's really about putting people into stress and seeing who can not just make it through that stress, but buffer that stress. Reward the process through teamwork, reward the process of stress through some internal dialogue that has everything to do with not being back on your heels, not being flat footed, but center of mass forward. And I should also be clear, I'm not talking about everybody being super aggro and always like, you know, work, work, work. Yeah. In fact, if you're 
spending too much epinephrine, if you're too much of an adrenaline junkie, you will burn out eventually. Unless you can find ways to recover yourself or to buffer that with dopamine. And the recovery process is especially important. There's a second reward system. So you've got the dopamine system, and I guess to really put a box around it, the subjective reward needs to be done at the hardest portion of a process. The tough conversation with a significant other, it's like when it's really tough and you want, you just, that's when you want to start telling yourself, this is the this is the good part because I'm not speaking or this is the good part because- <laughs> I'm not because, reacting. Right, I'm not reacting or this is the good part because I'm probably not doing it correctly, but I'm on the right path. If you tell yourself, this is, this is the neural pathway getting ground in there, like it really dialed in so that the, the next time this, I'm gonna breeze right past this. Yeah. That's really how the process works. Because dope, remember, no one comes along and drips dopamine in your ear, even if you get a billion dollars or you win a Nobel prize or you win the presidency. It's all internal. Hmm. These neurochemicals are all internal. We have this big forebrain, which allows us to place subjective context on things. How do you do it then? How do you bring dopamine in your brain subjectively through daily conversation with yourself? So um, there's a process I'm going through right now where I'm I'm trying to write a book and um, and it's hard and it's hard. And I was told that the harder it is, the better I'm probably doing it. And I was like, great. What I'm finding is there are a lot of interferences these days. I'm, I'm, I think social media is great. I teach neuroscience on social media because I think it's important to do public education. But it's a distraction too. But it's incredible. And it's, it's incredible how much time and energy it can take. So what I've started doing now is I turn off my phone and I lock it in a safe. <laughs> and like, I experience extreme anxiety. Right? For me lately, the longer I can keep that phone in a safe and write a, a grant or, my, or this book, <laughs> what I tell myself is the agitation is good. I'm, it's, at least I'm not doing that. And then I find that as I start to write and I get into the process, I start feeling good about it and I, I'll pause and say, okay, I, I have control. I have ultimate control over my behavior. I can put that thing away. There might be a nuclear war out there and I'm just doing this anyway. I have control over my thoughts, my feelings and, and behavior. So I tell myself that. And then I find I have immense energy and all I want to do is write. And when I kind you, of tunnel you, into yeah. the process. Wow. And I think that sometimes people need to write these things out for themselves so it's really concrete. I think some people are so unskilled at subjective rewards that writing it out is really powerful. So what would you write out for yourself as a subjective reward for this experience? As long as I'm writing, I'm on the right path. As long as I'm not writing, I'm looking at my phone, I'm not on the right path. Because for me, the, the two or three things that are most important for my career are writing grants, working on this book manuscript, and writing scientific manuscripts. 